We believe that anyone, anywhere can make startups. After spending more than a decade building our own company, we've learned a ton. We've mentored founders and built startup communities. We've helped craft government policies, and we've also invested in businesses, some that succeeded and some that didn't. We've helped thousands of startup founders, funders, and facilitators. We're inspired by their dreams and determination. Our goal is to travel across America and meet as many as we can, to tell their story and share their lessons. We're on a mission to help you succeed, to show you that you aren't crazy, you aren't alone, you really can do this. We're here to make startups together. Okay, well, we are on our road trip and uh, Grace is driving, so I'm gonna try not to distract her too much, but I do wanna talk to her a little bit about all these site visits we're going to make in this entire ecosystem tour and why on earth we're doing this type of stuff. So Grace, welcome to the conversation. Thank you. This is gonna be pretty free form because okay. I have no idea where this is gonna go, but I just felt like before we get started on this journey, and we do our, our first site visit is with uh, Reno, Nevada tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And who are we meeting with in Reno, Nevada? I believe we're meeting with Doug Irwin and the ecosystem that he works with um, based in downtown Reno. We've never been there. Um, I know Doug from some of the other work that we overlap with. So excited to see what their town has to offer our entrepreneurs and founders. Yeah, so you and I have both been at ecosystem building for a long, long time, right? Right. So what do you think is important <laughs> about this ecosystem tour? Well, there's a, there's this thesis I have about how every town in America is passionate and supportive of with their local businesses, whether they're small or big. And I think the idea that ecosystem builders play a role in that economy is really interesting. And so I don't think that right now that professionally our peers may get acknowledged in that way. And so part of the roadshow is to seek them out, hear what their story is, find out if there are some parallels in how ecosystem builders across the country do things. And it could be anywhere from, you know, helping a young person start their business to a mom and pop business, to a franchise, to a tech startup. And so the, the, the rhythm that happens in each of these cities across the country, across geographies, across zip codes, across demographics, what are the parallels to that? You know, what are the differences and how what, how might we learn from each other, um, knowing that we're all interested in economic prosperity and helping our local economies? I often think to myself, what do I wish I knew 11 years ago when we were starting this type of work? And so if you could go back and talk to yourself 11 years ago, <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> Like, what was I thinking? Yeah, of course. <laughs> what was I thinking? This is really hard. Yeah. I mean, tr like, really, why do you think helping entrepreneurs is so hard? Well, I think it depends on where you are as, a, as an ecosystem builder. So some people I could see coming out of the business world saying like, oh, I'm a successful entrepreneur. I want to help the next generation of entrepreneurs. Some people come from maybe the finance bank banking world and they see it as a as an economic you know engine to say like hey I'm gonna help build businesses and then there'll be some 
you know, financial benefit from it. I think as an investor, whether you're a VC or an angel or the friends and family around, you, you want to help those that might have something innovative. And uh, we didn't really see anybody really doing that in Augusta. And, you know, having had some history and experience, lived experiences with either being from the Bay Area or working in Silicon Valley, we, we knew intuitively that, that the people that care about entrepreneurs and the founders and, and an innovative ecosystem exist in hundreds of cities across the country, thousands. And so I think we took it upon ourselves in Augusta to say, like, how do we collect those people? How do we congregate as a community around this lens that, you know, it's a good place to start a company. It's a good place to stay and start a company. It's a good place to recruit people to come and start companies. And I think that was the thesis in which the work that we did was, was, was born. Yeah. I, I was trying to think, so I know when, when I was getting involved in this, I, I hate to say that I was just naive, but I guess the truth is I kind of was there. There was a beauty to that, that naivete that existed that made me think that all of this was possible. And I, I think without it, there's no way we would have come as far as we have in building our community. Um, and I just wonder, like, maybe first off, if you can rewind back to the first two or three years, what do you think is the most important thing we got right, you know, that led to like the biggest uh, accomplishment that you, you, you're the most proud of that you think served as a foundation for everything. And then what is something that you really wish we had known more about in those first two to three years to set ourselves up better? Well, I'm I mean, making the questions easy, aren't I? Well, I think that you know, stepping into the unknown, regardless of whatever it is, you're really not going to be good at it in the beginning. And it doesn't matter if you're starting a sport, learning piano, a new language, starting a business, like it's ultimately hard. So starting an ecosystem is not easy. Um, I think, you know, personally and professionally being at a stage where we could take some calculated risks with what does it look like to start a community? Because ideally it has to be funded or fundable you know we went through some growing pains in that respect nonprofit for profit um i think there's partnerships that that worked in our favor you know the people that really really cared about building this community um came up through various channels to either work or donate or fund or or show up um i think we had a couple of early wins with some of our partnerships um I think that uh, being more vocal about our why is really, really important. Um, I think every community has a bunch of different players, whether it's private or public, government, um, investors. And so, you know, understanding that landscape and what that looked like, um, you know, sincerely, people, they want to help. And if they don't, it's okay. You know? I think it's interesting because, and I don't disagree, 11 years in, I think one of the biggest things we talk about is how to solve the, the funding, the basically the capital stack for ecosystem building itself. I mean, there's the capital stack the, to help the entrepreneurs, but then there's also the capital stack to sustain doing the work. But in so many ways, I look at the, the early days of the clubhouse when we were doing that. And, you know, our ecosystem was no different than any other startup that's out there yeah. and the whole way we were able to make everything work wasn't that we had venture capital backing or government grant backing or anything like that. It's that we were really dialed into a community of people that we were serving that were our customers. And so day one, when we opened the clubhouse, you know, we only opened our doors because we had found enough members <laughs> to pay a monthly rate so that we could afford to pay the basic utilities and rent for, for a facility. And, um, and I think that was one of the key secrets for us, 
not just in the early days, but even to, to date now is that we have always focused on how do we create this earned revenue model to sustain the type of work that we do. And, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's so many times I wish we had big grants and it, it, and it was a big grant from the Robert Wood Johnson foundation and a big grant from the Kaufman foundation that we got four or five years into the, doing this work that, that sort of accelerated us to another level from where we had begun. Um, but I just think that our ability to build our ecosystem based on our own customer discovery and our own um, revenue streams that come directly from supporting customers, it's just always kept us really aligned in the type of work that we do. Um, so I guess I'm, maybe I'm not, there's not so much of a question in that, but maybe it's just thinking like, what do you think we're going to discover as we visit 24 cities from around the country that they have been able to do to, uh, you know, to really sustain their vision and to, to make it possible for them to help the entrepreneurs in their community grow? Well, I think it's a, um, it's kind of like a recipe, right? So when you're putting together a bunch of things, people, places, services, the, the, the core ingredients comes down to, yes, the ecosystem builders, people like us. And then there's the problem being solved, which is how do you help and support entrepreneurs and founders? And so seeking them out, you know, whether that's through social media or whether that's through events or programming. And then, and then the third player is, is sort of the, the indirect, um, supporters and, and, you know, that could be anything from, you know, our landlord, you know, giving us a good deal to being put onto the, you know, mayor's budget, you know, having some funding mechanisms going through the economic development agencies. Um, it could be a patron, you know, somebody that supports economic mobility and entrepreneurship, just like they would be supporting the arts or education. And I think that kind of quote recipe helps launch something to be successful. And then like all good startups, you scale it. And so the scaling of it is that you're serving more people, you're providing more programming, you're moving to a bigger space, you have a bigger budget, you're bringing on more staff. And so when I look at our peers, I see a lot of the same cycle of what does that look like? Where did it come out of? Um, I do think on occasion they could be spinoffs of other more formal institutions. You know, we're gonna be visiting some people who might have been written or subsidized by like a university or maybe like a tech company and they want to have an offshoot for founders and entrepreneurs. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different kind of model. Um, but I think, you know, we as an organization too, align ourselves with, with like a startup, you know, company in general, we're scrappy, you know, we try and find like-minded people that are mission driven. We want to serve a purpose. Um, but we also want to run it like a, like a revenue producing business. I mean, keeping up with our over overhead and whatnot. It seems virtuous running our business to support businesses as a business. I mean, there's a, there's a certain quality to, again, attracting people that are more interested in, in giving rather than taking, like there's a formula to that. And I think that it's a testament to some of our loyal members that have literally been subscribing as patrons with us for over a decade. They believe in what we're doing and they want to help. And I think that that's, you know, one of the magical things about why we've been able to sustain ourselves for so long. Okay. My gut tells me that there's going to be different ways that this gets defined everywhere, but day zero, as we start this tour, how would you define success in startup community building? We talk about 5 million people starting businesses every year in our country. 5 million, that's a lot. So we want to be able to say statistically after a year, how many of them are still in business after year two, year three, year four. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that a big part of what we do is improve the odds that they 
they stay in business. Um, but I, I guess like when I look at it, I, I just think about the fundamentals that at the end of the day, America is a capitalist country, right? And so from an economic development standpoint, we can, um, you know, we can essentially try to attract a, a business from another community to create another location to do its work in our in our community and that that might end up creating 40 jobs at a factory or 800 jobs at a factory and who knows which one it is but i, I think it, when you look underneath all of that you know we're basically we're creating a business and a business produces something and then it goes and it sells that across whatever region it can sell the country the world and then that brings in money from all those places to wherever the business is owned. And so, you know, if you, uh, if you're working for Amazon, you know, the vast majority of the wealth that comes in from that goes to Seattle where they're headquartered. It doesn't go to wherever each distribution center is. That's just creating a you know, sort of like a baseline of employment around that, that I think what you typically find is these larger companies will just chase the subsidies from community to community. And so as soon as they might expire somewhere, unless their investment has become so deep that they need to intrinsically to stay in that community, then they have to relocate. So I think of it and like, I really look at our core job in ecosystem building is how do we, how do we create an export economy from our community to other places in our state, in our country, in our world, because that's the thing that brings new dollars into our community. And then of course, there's going to be entrepreneurial activity in the service economy that circulates that money inside of our communities. But the more our communities send out into the world and bring back, I think that's the more we, we fundamentally create wealth in our community. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, that's like a long, long little, uh, you know, Eric's ideology on, on startup creation. Um, well, remember going back to your economic architecture map, you know, when you talk about like, what is it? 20 counties in our country help yeah. sustain a large percentage of, of new venture creation. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's basically 20 counties in the U S where half of all venture capital is invested. Um, and I, I was reading a story in the news this morning that there's seven companies that are driving almost all of the growth in the S and P 500 mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's that, you know, our, our wealth creation and our productive capacity as a country is getting increasingly concentrated in fewer and fewer hands. And I, I think one of the things that concerns me is that you see a lot of disparity in our country as a byproduct of, of mm -hmm. this sort of growing gap in perceived economic opportunity and, and probably real economic opportunity. Um, and I guess my belief underneath all of it is that the tools, the skills, the knowledge, the tools to succeed as an entrepreneur are becoming less available to, mm -hmm. to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the, the main things at least, you know, the first five years was us just building a community. And I think the, 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 the six years since then has been realizing what a gap exists between the communities where most of our country lives mm -hmm. and the, the 20 counties where most of our wealth is going. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I really... I think that the way that we have worked to build this finance industry credential um, with banks and investors to, to help not only startups get access to early stage capital, but to help entrepreneur support organizations tap into workforce dollars. I think that has been a huge um, way of changing this conversation because I really think that if we can democratize the ability to make startups, and democratize the ability to invest in startups so that it can occur anywhere in America, in any community, regardless of your demographics, regardless of your population, 
um, that that that's going to open up in my in my hopes and in my dreams this new renaissance this new golden era for our country and for the world um, but I think you're used to my idealism when it comes to to all of this that's okay I mean I think the big the big audacious idea that we have does stem from having birthed the clubhouse in Augusta Georgia because it made us realize that yeah there's hundreds of Augusta Georgias like I said across the country and so what does it look like to help move that needle and there's no secret sauce in Silicon Valley other than the concentration of some of those energies but if you have the right kind of people with the right kind of perspective and the right kind of support, it, you can really create a beautiful entrepreneurial ecosystem that's unique to your community. It's not, it's not that you want to be Silicon Valley. It's that you want to be able to create a wonderful, safe, innovative space for somebody who has an idea to launch it. Well, on that note, are you ready to go learn about Reno, Nevada? Yeah. What other cities are on our agenda? Ideally, we're going to go visit Sacramento. We're going to go visit Oakland. So, uh, so the intent is to, again, reach out to our fellow ecosystem builders and just figure out, you know, what is it about where they are that makes them unique and where, what is it about where they are that makes them similar to other ecosystem builders. Right. And so on that note, we are dedicating ourselves to visit 24 startup communities this year. So that means there's a lot of room. So please, please fill out our form, reach out to us on LinkedIn through our website. Let us know if you'd like us to come visit your city. Our goal is to learn everything that we can about your city, about your organization, about the things that have driven you to take on this effort to draw your to 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 really grow your community, um, and then we also really want to make sure that we get to meet at least one of your startups. We want to we want to hear your story from their perspective as well, and see how they've been able to benefit from the type of work that you do. So please um, reach out to us. Let us know if it's okay to come to your city. We're going to try to hit, like I said, as many as we can. Uh, Grace, any parting words? Um, we'll come visit you as long as the weather's good. <laughs> okay, so it has to be better than the weather we're driving through to get to Reno right now, but I'm sure it will be completely worth it, and pretty soon we get to see some snow. So, on that note, see, see you, you later. soon. <laughs>